Okay, here is our project. I am going to convert my 1592 or 1572 Hewnett crane from using the standard control over to the fly sky. Now, it's unfortunately kind of overkill with this because out of the five things that are going to be converted, really the whole thing I'm doing it for is one, the rotation. Okay, if you've had one of these cranes, you know how jumpy the rotation is. Now, let me show you how long a boom. I've got a six foot boom on here. Okay, if you can, if I can get you back far enough to see that. Okay, and you can see my six foot boom on the other one on the floor. Okay, so here's the problem. Let me show you. See how, see how jumpy that is? And it's really, really accented with this longer boom. Okay, I need to be able to move nice and gentle and slow because what I want to do is some scenarios with bridge building and setting things on a truck and stuff like that. And that jumpiness of this setup is just not going to work. So what do I need? I've got a fly sky unit. This will hold up to 10 things. I've got a couple of these and I use this and I'll need this, this fly sky unit, the more expensive one, because I'm going to do a mix for the track. Okay. So let me show you exactly, first of all, what I had to buy for this. Okay. So I've got these ESC units. Okay. Electronic speed control. And what they're going to do is hook into a receiver in one end and hook into the motor or the winch in the other, okay? And these are uh, e-boot. I'm going to have to put one of these on every uh, electric motor, one on each track, okay, each winch, and then the rotational uh, motor, okay? So I'm just going to have to solder those on, okay? So these are... I, I get the 20 amp uh, overkill, but they're not any more expensive, and if they are, that's worth a little bit. Okay, and that, again, these are the ESC units. Okay, I also get these e-boots that I told you about. And then I bought this kit of solder fasteners, so in the ends, when they come together, I can just use that if I need to solder wire to wire. Okay, tools that I need. I've got just a couple sets of pliers. I've got my uh, screwdriver set. I'm going to have a soldering iron and I'm also going to maybe need the heat gun if I use any of these soldering kits. Okay, one thing I did forget to tell you is I need one of these receivers to go with the um, Fly Sky unit because all five of these will plug into this receiver. Okay, so that's where we're at. What I'm going to do next is get this torn apart and show you what my next step is. So um, I'll come back to you once I have this apart and we're looking at the motors. All right, so now I've got my cover off, and what I've got to do is I need to get in here you can see the two winches what you can't see are the motors down below but these are the lead lines here coming up uh, pick them up high enough for you to see okay and then I've got the rotational motor here okay so all five of those are going to hook to an ESC right one of one of these so in order to do that I've got to put one of these e-boots on each one of them Okay, so I've got a couple choices. What I could do is cut the wires and then put the um, connectors on, or just take the wires off and solder directly, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to solder these e boots to each of those terminals, okay, for each of the winches and for the rotation. And now, because the motors are way down below, underneath what I'm going to do is snip the wires here okay and use uh, the soldering kit the solder joiners okay 
Let's do that. And I'll show you that when everything is complete. Okay. Now for taking the cover off, it gets a little tricky. What you have to do is set it on its side, take the screws that you can see off and with it plugged in, you're going to have to rotate the tracks until each of the screws comes back. Now what I do is I don't put all the screws back in. I think there are seven of them. I put four of them, one in each corner, and then I circle it with a, a marker. So if I have to get in there again, I know I know what um, uh, I, I know which ones to take off. Now, also incidentally, with the longer boom, I had to get in here and put in different line, and that was pretty easy. All I did was wound the old line line all the way out and snipped it off. Took the new line. Put a little piece of a little bit of super glue in there, let it set for 30 seconds, and then started winding it in, okay, until I had the length. Actually, what I did is I put as much as I could in there. And I so I have overkill, I have more than I can use. So I've got plenty of winch line in here. Now, what I'm going to do is take out this motherboard that came with it, the stock Huna motherboard. Okay, because replacing it is going to be the receiver that we use. All right, so when I come back to you, I'm going to have the e-boot set up on all these, the motherboard gone, okay? And what we'll be able to do is plug in and see how everything works with our uh, controller. Okay, so here we go. I've got e-boots attached to both winches, okay? I've got them attached to both tracks, and again, I didn't have to get in below and mess with the tracks because all I did was snip off the lead wires and then use these soldering connectors to connect to the e-boot, okay? The last thing, and I'm going to wait and do this while you're watching to show you, if you haven't done it before, I've got to attach this e-boot to the rotational. And all I did was, I took the wires off, I had snipped them off, and I held the hot soldering iron, pulled the wires off, so there's a little bit of solder left on them. So, we're going to try it without having to attach solder. All I'm going to do is heat it up. Let's see if I can get that. If I have to, I'll add solder. Let's we'll see if there's enough there. Come on, you little rascal. Hold. Hey, there we go. Now there's a lot more solder on the other one. I did the hard one first. So I heat up the solder. Push it on. If I get it at the right angle, that would help me. There we go, we melted it. And then hold it. Okay. So there we are. We've got solder connections to all five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Last thing. Oh, and another thing in tools. I forgot to tell you that I use my uh, uh, crimper and a um, for stripping the wire. I needed that. I forgot to tell you that. Okay. So I've got all of these connected. The next thing I'm going to have to do is get this set up and all of these are going to plug into an ESC and then they will plug into a battery. Now here's the last trick. The problem is you gotta make a wiring harness, okay? Because for some reason, each one of these e-boots needs power. When you do a servo, it's fine. All you need is one going to the receiver and the receiver sends it back but for some reason with the e-boots uh, you need to each of them has a wire has to have a connection to the battery so what i do is i create one of these wiring harnesses okay i take five male e-boots okay why do we use male because coming off the battery is a male so in effect what, what i'm creating is the battery will plug in here Okay, just like that, and each of these five will plug in and power the e-boots. That's this 
a, a, a weird way it has to be set up, but that's just any time you do the ESCs, unless I'm missing something. But I've never had it. I've never had success on going to the servo and then back. Each of the ESCs needs power for it to work. Okay, so when I come back, I'm going to have this all hooked up to the receiver. Okay, and we'll test everything out, and then we'll put it back together and we'll show the rotation. Okay. Okay, we have all our ESCs hooked up to each of the um, motors. Now, before I put it back together, I always recommend, pardon me, I'm all covered with dirt and dust from handling another model. <coughs> always test it. These ESCs, I don't trust them. You get them all together, and uh, sometimes they just don't work. Always order extra. If you need five, order six. That's what I do. Okay. So I've got the battery hooked into our uh, harness. Our harness is each of the... Uh, ESCs all going into the uh, receiver. Alright, so here is, and, and I had to set up the mix on the track. Um, I've got a video on how to set up the mixes. It's easy. Um, there's also other ones on YouTube. But, so, here we go. So, this will be forward, reverse, right, left, Okay, so the tracks work, and that's all on the right stick, okay? So I set up now the winch for raising and lowering the hook. This winch, okay, up and down on there. Now, sideways, I am doing the rotation of the boom. So you can see that, I got that. And then the fifth thing for raising and lowering the boom, which I won't do nearly as much, but I've got that set up on one of the auxiliary controls here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put everything back together, and I'm going to show you this in operation, the whole reason that I did this, okay? Okay, one more important step that I did forget to tell you about. This comes with, inside here, are weights, okay, which are fantastic. The problem is now we are going to need a lot more space to put our electronics. Okay, so what I did is I took the weights out. You just undo the four screws and then I got in here with my Dremel and cut all that stuff out. Unscrewed this little battery box. Okay, and we've got the cover on the top to cover everything up. So now the, all of my electronics will go here. And what I'm going to have to do is externally put all the weights. Now, we're going to have to do that anyway. We're going to have to put extra weights on the outside. If you have um, a uh, you know 3D printer that's neat, you can make a little decorative box back there. I'm going to have to hide mine. I'm going to um, figure something out but, um, to do that. But you need a lot of weight in the back to counter it counter uh, balance and especially for me with a long boom. So I've got to fit all my electronics in here and the other thing is I forgot tool wise Dremel um, to cut that. It's not a necessity but it, it sure made it handier instead of having to get in there and snip everything out. So here's an idea what I'm going to have to do here. I've got all my electronics and the good big thing is I'm going to have to make sure none of them tangle with the lead ropes, okay, like that one did. So I just undid it and we did here, okay. So all of the electronics now are going to go in here and I'm going to have to lead it around and I'll figure it out. But that's going to be part of the challenge is putting all that in there. Okay, once I get everything together, we'll come back and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we go. Everything's set up. I uh, wanted to show you exactly one of the reasons why I went to the ESCs. Um, I want to be able to pick things up and swing the boom as steadily as possible, okay, this way. This is the problem. I apologize, you can't see all the way up the boom, but it's so tall that... 
in order to do that, I'd have it, have it so far away. All right, so. And again, the ESCs don't affect either of the uh, winches. That's just the steady speed that they work. Okay, now we will show you how nice and slow we can walk. Okay, and again, this is this is the key right here. Nice and slow and steady with the boom. That's what I want to be able to do. Okay, so let's go back again. Let's set a set a little bobcat on the ship. And again, I have my boom control here for down, lowering it. And i got to get a little more ballast, it looks like. Maybe we can sweep that forward like that. Okay. Right. Wrong control. Getting used to the controls. Okay. So there we go, our ESCs for the 1572 crane. And uh, let me unhook it so I can move the boom around for you. Okay, just to show you again, I've got the controls so that I can go forward, turn, turn. This raises. This swings the boom, you know, it's go nice and slow and steady, and that was the whole key to this. And then I have the, the boom up and down on this switch. Okay, so there's a 1572 crane on a FlySky controller with ESCs.